So welcome everybody to the eighth event in the uh, Small Business uh, Impact webinar sessions, uh, which are being delivered as part of Small Business Month. Um, we welcome uh, Jacqueline and Palicia from A Realized Business this morning. And um, on the screen, you'll see who we, who's going to be presenting this morning. I won't go into all the detail, you can read for yourself, but uh, what we're going to be hearing about today is using LinkedIn now, a lot of people have LinkedIn accounts and a lot of people use them well and a lot of people um, don't. And I think uh, it's a tool which is uh, often underutilized, particularly in a B2B um, situation. So hopefully today you're gonna to get some really good insights into how to use it properly. I will hand over to Palicia and Jacqueline. Um, if you have any questions, please place them in the Q&A box. Uh, observations or comments, put them in the chat box and we'll go from there. So. Over to you, Jacqueline and Felicia. Thanks, thanks so much, Will, and uh, thanks for for having us today, everyone. And we're going to start with why LinkedIn, which is you know LinkedIn is is a platform that those of us in the small business world could certainly utilize more. Um, and for those of us that are in that business to business space, regardless of the size of our businesses, LinkedIn has the potential to be a gold mine. Um, but let's not discount LinkedIn as a platform of value for those of us working in the B2C space as well. So um, because LinkedIn has over 10 million users in Australia, more importantly, 5.5 million of those are active month by month. So that's 5.5 million uh, potential customers even as a business to customer business, as long as you share content with the professional audience in mind, because that's what primarily makes up the audience in LinkedIn. It's certainly not a space to rule out um, whether you're a B2B business or a B2C business, um, even though it's regarded as a B2B platform. So just quickly, um, we're, I'm gonna share a little bit about Realize Business. So at Realize Business, we're a not-for-profit business-to-business organization. Um, and we provide advice and coaching um, to clients and it's subsidized by the government. Um, and while we do use LinkedIn to promote our services to small business clients, um, for us, the, the biggest impact has been in following our, in, in kind of um, growing our brand with bigger businesses and our government stakeholders. Um, and Palisha is going to share some more detail with you on how we did that and how you can do it as well as a, as a small business. So um, LinkedIn as a whole has over 650 million users globally. And if you have connections in other countries, you will have a reach there. Um, and if those connections engage in your content, uh, even more so. Um, otherwise, algorithms on LinkedIn are set to keep you more engaged in the country you reside in, reside in. But if you build your network and if you have an international network, you will have a reach to that 650 million um, if you are sharing and if you are also engaging and you're, you're commenting on what other people are doing. So it's also a place where high level executives and senior decision makers are not only present, but they're active and that activity makes a big difference. So, and they're more active here than on any other platform and they make up about 10% of active users. So these are the people that you quite often decide where, where money will be spent and where big project money will be spent. Um, so another thing that's uniquely different uh, in LinkedIn is that um, users are there because they're looking for content. So they're looking for um, what other people are talking about and they're looking to learn and they're open. Um, and that's different to any other platform. And that's where you can potentially um, reach people that you may have never reached before. So um, content is specific. It's either business or industry related. Um, and they're looking for thought leadership. So Facebook, for example, um, while there is a place for content, it's not the main reason people are there. Um, and, and so, you know, you, it, it will be less effective than what it is on LinkedIn. Um, and it's that content piece that's so strong for your brand in and in creating a story for your brand that for someone like myself, who's always worked in B2B, I can't recommend LinkedIn in enough. And I've found it to be incredibly successful to be able to achieve brand growth and particularly to achieve recognition and trust with key decision makers. Um, and, and I've achieved that here with Palicia in Realize Business as a small business. Um, so that's where I, I, I feel like it's a place where there's opportunity for everyone and we should utilize that more. Um, 
So I would say there's a strong corporate component to LinkedIn users, and I'd say don't shy away because of that. Uh, because your own authenticity in being a small business owner, um, and often you are the brand of your business, um, that gives you greater opportunity to stand out and be unique on this platform. But um, so do your research, uh, look at what others are doing or reach out for help from an expert. And it doesn't, um, and, and speaking to an expert doesn't have to be costly exercise. Like for example, we have um, six uh, incredible business advisors who specialize in marketing at Realize Business. So um, that is uh, something that is available to all small business owners in Sydney. And you can certainly reach out to us and potentially um, get some help through our government funded programs. So now I'm going to hand over to Palicia, our uh, digital marketing specialist at Realize Business, and she's going to give you a quick overview on how you can um, really functionally utilize LinkedIn as a small business owner. Uh, and she's going to share how we've used it in our business to achieve great results. Um, and it's by far the best results and the best platform for our B2B services business. But in particular, we've been highly successful in building trust in our brand across all levels of businesses by communicating well on this platform. And uh, we're gonna show you how, how you can do it as well. Thank you, Jacqueline, for the introduction and also letting us know some really good insights on why you should be on LinkedIn. So before I move on with my uh, content, I do wanna share a little secret. Um, so I have presented a lot before, but this is my very first time on LinkedIn. So I am a little nervous, um, so please forgive me if I do make any mistakes. Um, so in this section, what I will really be covering is some uh, you know, really practical tips that you can take away and straight away implement it into your business. Uh, so I'll be talking about a personal LinkedIn page. Uh, I'll go into uh, how you can create a company LinkedIn page for your business and some tips around there. And we'll also be talking about campaign manager and how to make the best use of it. And lastly, I'll be talking about um, some do's and don'ts in terms of uh, in mail in LinkedIn. So moving on with company LinkedIn page. Now, Jacqueline's already mentioned why you should be or why sh you should have a company page on LinkedIn. Um, so if you are not on LinkedIn or if your business isn't on LinkedIn, I would highly recommend you to have your page on LinkedIn because obviously you will have that, you know, competitive edge over your other small businesses because quite of, often you don't really find um, many small businesses on LinkedIn. So that will definitely help you reach out to that massive uh, pool of audience on LinkedIn. So uh, for those of you who don't have a LinkedIn page yet, it's very simple. Um, you can create one. Uh, uh, in order to create a company LinkedIn page, you will need a personal LinkedIn page, which is very simple. All you have to do is again, go into linkedin.com and just as you would sign up to any other you know, account these days on, uh, on the website, just sign up and that's how you can create your personal LinkedIn page. Now, once you have your personal LinkedIn page, you can obviously log on to your personal LinkedIn page. And if you hover over where it says work here uh, and click on it, you'll see a pop-up that gives you an option to create a company page. So it's really simple. You just click on it and it'll take you to this page where you can choose uh, like what kind of business you are. So if you are a small business, you choose that category there. Um, and it'll take you to this page on your desktop where you will have to share or you know, put in all your details in, in terms of your um, company profile. And I would like to highlight this bit uh, a little bit more because um, it is a fact that you know, if you fill in all the information on this page, you do tend to get 30% more uh, views on your uh, company page. So I would recommend you to fill every detail possible here uh, as you can. Uh, another thing I've highlighted here is in red is the tagline. So this is where you actually put in your uh, company positioning. Again, it's really, really important to get that piece, positioning piece uh, correct on LinkedIn. 
So Jacqueline will obviously let you know more about how you can perfect your positioning uh, later on. Um, so moving on, let's talk about campaign manager. So for those of you who aren't familiar with campaign manager on LinkedIn, um, it's basically LinkedIn's tool to, you know, for creating and managing ad accounts and campaigns. And in other words, it's also the place where you can actually start posting or sponsoring your post or creating your ads. Now, in order to create your first ad, you obviously need to have a campaign manager account set up. Uh, and it's very simple. Again, uh, you'll find it where if you go on hover over where it says work, uh, you'll see an icon that says advertise. Now, I already have it on my uh, menu bar here. Be that's because I already have a campaign manager set up. For those of you who don't have it yet, it'll pop uh, up when you click on work and that's where you go in and set it up. It's very simple. All you have to do is just fill in a few details and you also need your credit card details set up. Um, so moving on, there's few things you can do with uh, campaign manager and there's a few different ways you can create an ad. Um, so the first way is you can actually create a completely new campaign for your business or uh, the other way to doing it is actually just sponsoring your post that you've already posted on your, you know, feeds in, in your big company page. Uh, and I've also highlighted this bit here where it says digital marketing program. And that is actually what LinkedIn calls it as text ads. Uh, and these sort of ads are generally, you know, a lot less expensive than uh, what you see on your actual news feed. So um, that's one thing to note. So when you look at campaign manager, um, there are a few campaign necessities that you will require before you actually create an ad on LinkedIn. So the first thing is you should have your creatives ready. Now by creative, what I mean is, you know, you have to have a content ready for your uh, ad campaign that you want to do. And again, I have that image, depending on what sort of ad you're doing. If you're doing a text ad, which usually tends to be really small and it's usually shown on the side of your uh, newsfeed, you have to you know, tweak your image size accordingly. And again, depending on what you want out of the ad, whether you're di directing your um, Add towards your website or maybe even you know a product page you have or a landing page you have to have that ready as well another thing to be really clear on is the objective of the ad so what do you really want to get out of the ad you are doing so is it is it is it your is it just brand awareness you're looking at or do you just want website visits to your website or are you just you know, trying to sell a product or maybe uh, get more registrations for an event you're doing? So you'll have to look into all of those as well. Another thing to be really clear on is your target audience. Now, I think you would know your target audience better than anyone else in your business or even better than LinkedIn would know. So again, when you do a campaign, there are a few ways you can target your audience in terms of you know, different places. You can choose to do your ad and show it to people living all across Australia, or you could even narrow it down to just you know, show your ads to people living in New South Wales, or you could further go deeper or narrow your audience to uh, you know, different professions out there or depending on what people are interested in. Now, another thing to note here is the target size. Now, LinkedIn usually recommends having at least a size of 50 to 60K in terms of your target audience to have a good impact in terms of your ad. But I think, you know, if you know your audience well, I don't think it's necessary to have that, you know, huge audience uh, focused on. Um, and again, like I said, you know your audience better than LinkedIn does. So I would rather have something really segmented and really effective uh, in terms of your ad. Another thing to note is uh, budget. 
Now, obviously with budget, you know, you can have any kind of budget when you do an ad. Uh, so if you say have $50 as your budget, you can obviously do different kinds of ad, break that $50 down to say 25, you could put that $25 to do like a simple text ad like I showed you earlier, or again, break it down to other different kinds of ads as well. Now, most people in average needs at least 10 exposures from your business or a post from your business in order to go from, uh, you know, okay, I don't know about this company to, okay, I'm starting to know a little bit more about this company, what their, you know, differentiation points are to actually have that purchase intent or to actually have them buy something from your business. So when you do a campaign, and most of you that have already done a campaign, you'll realize there, there are days that you can actually choose. So I would recommend to do at least seven days or run your ad for seven days because it gives that uh, extra exposure uh, as well and it makes your ad really effective. Now, I would love to have taken you through all the steps of actually creating an, a, a really good campaign that works, but we are short on time today. So if you would like to know how to create a really good campaign, you can always reach out to us or, uh, you know, we do have three one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions where we can walk you through that and also, you know, help you with your brand and LinkedIn strategy. I do want to highlight a few things, however, in terms of, um, you know, again, getting your ads correct, uh, especially in terms of creatives. Uh, this is a recent campaign I did. And I'll, the reason why I have this here is you'll see uh, when you do ads, it's really important to have a really clear call to action, um, especially it's always better when you have it on the image, image itself. And I've, uh, from the past, what, two, three years we've been doing ads, the ads that actually have call to actions in the image, they tend to have more impact and do really well. So obviously these things seems, might seem um, you know, trivial or small, but it does have a huge impact in the long run. Um, another thing uh, is to look at your objective. Now, this is what you'll see when you actually choose um, you know, what objective you have in terms of your um, ad. So the reason why I have this here is because you obviously can choose your ads for lead gen or website conversions. I would recommend you to do a lot of uh, website conversions versus lead generation because at least I prefer doing uh, website conversions because that way you're really, um, you know, getting all that, your prospective client data in one place. And if I would mostly use lead gen if say our website isn't running uh, well, or if our, you know, uh, say our landing page isn't doing well. And that's when you actually can use the generation uh, conversion as well when you're doing ads. Another thing I want to note here is we haven't really spent much on brand awareness as such, and it does cost you a lot when you're, you know, doing ads on LinkedIn comparatively. And I would much rather you spend that time and you know money in actually creating a brand strategy that would help you to build your, you know, brand in the long run. Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to highlight. Uh, another thing, again, here, obviously, when you're doing ad campaigns, you can choose different options. And this is what you choose if you want to spend a lot lesser uh, when you're doing ads. So that's the text ad option that you can choose, uh, the one I showed earlier as well. Uh, I've highlighted this placement here as well. Now, um, I don't know if you've come across it a lot before, but I do have you know, times where I actually am using an app and I suddenly get this irrelevant ad pop up and then I accidentally, you know, click on it and it's like, it, it's really annoying. So when you actually enable that, that's what, you know, LinkedIn is doing. So it's just showing your ads to people in their different partner apps and all that. And you don't necessarily want to spend your ad dollar 
uh, because every time someone clicks on your ad, you're actually spending uh, per click as well. Another thing to note when you're doing campaigns, especially when you're just starting, is actually set your budget to both daily and lifetime. So that way you're capping your budget uh, when you have a cap on your lifetime budget. So especially when you're initially starting, you don't really know what's going to work. So, you know, you might end up having just daily, uh, you know, budget set. And the next thing you realize is you've spent like $500 on an ad that doesn't, you know, uh, convert or doesn't have any impact. So again, that's something to be careful about. Uh, so let's move on to in-mails and what are the do's and don'ts in terms of in-mail. So again, I brought this up because in-mails usually can go, you know, both ways. It could actually work really well for your business, but again, it could also have a, you know, it could go against for your business or a company. Um, and there, uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with in-mails, it's basically uh, it's a premium inclusion, so you do have to pay for it on LinkedIn to have that option. And what it does is it really allows you to directly uh, message others that are not connected to you. And that's provided if they haven't you know, opted out of that option of in-mail. Now, there's two ways of doing in-mail. The first one is introduction card. And if you have done in-mails, I would recommend you to actually and if you do introduction card, I would recommend you to keep it really general because I've had times when I've received like, you know, direct sales pitch up right up front and it becomes really intrusive um, and it often, you know, creates brand damage as well. So I think the best way to do it, if you want to use in mail is uh, sending uh, new messages and that way you can actually research ahead about your, you know, the member or you, the person you're contacting and cater your messaging around, um, you know, that person or a business and it becomes uh, less intrusive that way. And it's definitely worked for us as well. So that's one thing to look at. Uh, so now I'm gonna hand over to Jacqueline. Thanks, Felicia. Um, so yeah, I can see we're running slightly over time. So I just want, but quickly um, wanted to give you, a, I guess, a really quick overview on positioning and perfecting your positioning, because that is um, not so important for LinkedIn. It's important for your whole business. And it's something that, um, that you should do as a small business owner uh, to really kind of grow your business and your brand. So um, start with establishing your identity so you can communicate your value consistently. Um, so we at Realize Business did a rebrand about three years ago. And I'm going to share a tiny bit of, with you about how we did that um, and how we would do it with, with clients. So if you don't have a team like we have a team. Um, you can always work with a business advisor or a consultant or peers and try to, to pull this together so that you have that um, standard positioning um, statement. So uh, we're going to uh, move on to the next slide. So how we did our, set up our positioning statement at Realize Business is we started with our four most essential components, which is product, price, market, and customer, and uh, and and uh, customer experience. Sorry, and we summarized each of these and what they mean to our brand. And to do this, we we assembled a group of people um, to work on it, like kind of to brainstorm it. So for those of you who know Realize Business, the three words we use are connect, energize, and grow. And you can see that down on our logo go down in the right hand corner there so um starting with the tables let's look about what we know about our business and break it down so our product it helps you grow through expert advice our price is affordable but we're credible because we uh, are backed by the, the government and we have been for our 30 years of operation um, and then we connect um, in our market so we connect not only to businesses but we connect businesses to businesses to opportunities to education um, but most importantly customer experience how do you make people feel how what it what what is it that you do in your business and how does that impact people um, and so for for us at Realize, we energize small business owners. We share success, we build confidence, um, 
And it seems simple, but it's a work in progress to develop this for your business. And you, but I recommend you do the groundwork. And I think if you take something away from today, um, take this away, that, that you, you really need to consistently communicate uh, what you do across all your platforms, but particularly on LinkedIn. Um, because on LinkedIn, um, and, and we won't go too far into developing content, but on LinkedIn, you've got... Um, more established businesses um they may be bigger businesses or they may be older businesses and they may have been afforded the time to put this work in um, and i think if you can take the time to put this work in so you can consistently position yourself um, even at a, at a live event as a pitch um, this will help people um, trust your brand and LinkedIn is the platform to build trust um, with other businesses um, and, and uh, other people, successful people. So why is this important for LinkedIn? So when you start to have a presence on LinkedIn, you'll start to show up in people's feed. And the first thing they'll do if you resonate with them is they'll look at your profile. So when they look at your personal um, positioning statement um, and they'll also look at your employment history and they'll more than likely click on your business um, out of your employment industry. And, and in the case of most of our participants here today, that's going to be your own business. So here in the image, this is realized business um, LinkedIn page and you can see both the about section which is who we are and what we do in positioning our business um, and and the website up in in the top um, left hand corner so this is why your consistent positioning is important because you will lead clients away from this platform um, onto another platform such as your website. Um, and to build trust, you want to consistently position your business on every platform and medium. Um, so when a potential follower or buyer clicks on your business page, this is the point where you have the potential to get them to look into you and your business and services further. So ensuring you have that strong, consistent positioning statement on both LinkedIn and your website is essential. Um, and this is where a warm lead can begin or when you can first start to establish trust with a potential new client um, and, and potentially bigger business clients and, and long-term or period contracts, uh, which, which is, is great to have foresight in, in, in the income coming in. Um, so now I'm going to hand back to Palicia and she's going to share with you really quickly just the success that we've had on LinkedIn in the past um, two years and just show you some stats um, from a multi-level content strategy and how you can achieve that success um, for yourself. Okay, this is uh, an infographic I quickly did for our LinkedIn um, stats. And as you can see, in the past financial year, we've grown over 400% in terms of our impressions. So that, that's actually a very significant growth within that one year period. And as you can see, we also have grown our audience 21% uh, in the last financial year. And this latest financial year, we've actually grown 43%. And that's actually you know, above uh, industry average. And it is, it is really good. Uh, this, however, wasn't like you know, an overnight success we all obviously had our brand strategy and our content strategy, uh, you know, fully planned. Uh, but having said that, you know, this is something you can achieve as well, because, you know, you have uh, access to all the audience on LinkedIn as well. And this is something you can achieve as well. Um, so another thing I wanted to highlight was, so just kind of show you what sort of content uh, have really worked for us. So these are the top three kinds that does really well uh, for us. And I think you should try it as well. The first one is actually, you know, doing posts on uh, just sort of letting your audience know that, you know, you are listening to them or you care about them. So those, these kinds of posts, they tend to do really well. The second one, like Jacqueline already mentioned earlier, it's those that have thought leadership concept to it, especially when it's coming from like a decision maker in the business, like the CEO or even like the owner. It sort of uh, builds that trust around your brand and also validates uh, at the same time. And that's maybe one of the reasons why these kind of posts, they do really well. Uh, another one that does and have always exceeded our expectations is 
when we do educational and uh, video content. And um, so this one in particular did really well. Uh, and I think it's because uh, it was a video firstly, and it was very educational. So in this video, Jackie, our CEO, she was basically talking about what was really current and sort of changes to JobKeeper and everything that was happening um, at that time. So it did really well. And these kinds of posts, they always tend to have at least 30 to 40% more engagement and impact when we do it. So I recommend you should also, you know, uh, invest time in doing these kinds of posts because it does help you build that uh, uh, audience. Now, moving on to the key takeaways from this presentation today. Firstly, again, um, I would highly recommend everyone uh, to be on LinkedIn and have your business on LinkedIn. Very simple things you can do is just have your you know, company page fully completed. That does tend to give you more views to your company page. Another thing to look at is trying to create that you know, thought leadership kind of content and in really invest in your brand strategy. Um, and obviously tap into doing educational content. Now, you know, if you are selling a product, it sort of tends to be a little bit hard uh, to do educational content, but, but you can always, you know, say, talk about your product or you could even go down to like what materials the product's made of and, you know, sort of give that little uh, educational knowledge around your product. And it's because, um, a lot of the professionals on LinkedIn, they, they are there to learn uh, things from you. So that obviously helps as well. Another thing is obviously listen to your audience. Um, how you can do it is, you know, you can always scroll across your news feeds and you'll see, you know, all these trends that's happening. Look at what are your uh, audience um, engaging with. And all you have to do is just, you know, share similar kind of content or comment on it, uh, it does uh, help you increase your impressions as well. Again, variety comes, like it's very important when, you, you, when you're doing your content because uh, creating an original content is, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort as well. But again, there's this rule that's called 411 rule. So for every one original content about your brand, you can always share something um, or share an update from another source or, you know, do four post reposted piece, piece of content by others. So what that helps you with is it just creates that consistency and eventually helps you grow your audience on LinkedIn. Uh, lastly, trial and error. We've always, you know, tried experimenting with different things. We know that, you know, educational content and thought leadership content, they do really well, but we, Obviously, we don't share it every day uh, because, you know, again, it's really necessary to experiment different kinds of posts and contents because, you know, every business is different and what might work for us might not work for you. So, again, when you try different things, you, that's how you actually uh, build your brand strategy and come up with a great uh, social strategy. So that's all from me. I'll hand over to Jacqueline now. Okay, thanks, Felicia. And, and uh, just really quickly, yeah, uh, just to sum it all up, we can help you do this um, through the Business Connect program. So just keep that in mind um, and, and reach out to Realize if, um, if you'd like support. In, and um, I'll hand over to Will. Thank you so much, guys. Um, really love that 411 rule, particularly, Felicia. Um, uh, it's, you know, because so often we're focusing on producing our own content all the time, but piggybacking onto other good content is really helpful too and uh, something to really think about. A few questions come through. Um, I'll just run through them. Um, the costs of the cost for campaign manager, do you know what they are? Uh, Go pay, you're right. So you don't really have any costs uh, associated to actually running or using a campaign manager. Yep. It's only when you actually start doing ads that you will have to uh, spend. Um, so yeah. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and can you can you add content and create posts without the campaign manager? 
Oh, absolutely, yes. Yep. So the campaign manager only comes into play when you actually want to reach out to other, like the bigger audience. Uh, so you can definitely, you know, do or share posts on your sure. personal, sure. Uh, say, company page. Okay. Uh, do you need a pay version of LinkedIn to to uh, to use campaign manager? Uh, no. So you can have the free version running. Uh, it's only when you want to, you know, do extra ads. Uh, that's where you will have to spend money. Okay. So you can use it. Okay, great. Um, nearly all my clients are local councils and other government organizations, and they do not have a strong presence on LinkedIn. Does it make sense to keep a company page on LinkedIn in this case? I would say yes, uh, because a lot of our stakeholders are also um, our government uh, and, and council clients. And um, what back to that stat that 10% of the LinkedIn audience are the decision makers, and a lot, and and I think you'll find that a lot of those decision makers, even in council and government, yeah. are actually on LinkedIn. The ministers yeah. are on LinkedIn. So yeah, it's worth. Yeah, it. uh, just uh, just on that one, Margaret. I work in lo I work for a local council, and um, you know, I have I have a very large uh, personal uh, network. And the way sometimes that I've sourced um, expertise and speakers and things like that are through uh, are through being educated on LinkedIn. So even though my profile isn't the official council one, it's my own personal one. I still work for council, and it guides my decision making as well. So. I think that might be give you an insight. Um, how regularly would you recommend posting? Uh, we we post a minimum of three times a week on LinkedIn. Uh, we also make sure we do at least one content piece a month. Um, but you could you could do you could do a piece a week or a piece every two weeks if if you have the um, the manpower. But you need to be consistent. Sure. So once once you set up your schedule and your content. Um, schedule be consistent and, and carry on with it okay because okay because i keep it consistent okay now are there any other questions guys i think i've covered everything um that's come through um so we've covered campaign manager costs yep fabulous okay well i will i will wrap up the session so thank you so much uh, to both of you today jacqueline and Palicia. Palicia, you did really well so even though it was your first time doing a presentation on this you did an excellent job so Good thank you so much <laughs> thank you. thanks Jacqueline and um yeah we'll uh, we look forward to seeing everybody at our we've got four more sessions next week in the um the business impact webinar series so please uh, have a look at our website and make sure that you're signed up I'll send an email around with more information uh shortly so just wrapping up thanks everybody again and we'll see you all very very soon thank you Cheers. Bye.